Welcome back to another True Crime Time with me, Junebug, on the Let's See How This Goes channel. And I bring that up because we're really going to see how this goes with, this is my first true crime with, you could probably hear her bell with the kid, with Dinky Sue. She is obsessed with me. Hey. Primarily because I am the one who's mainly home during the day. So, no, you can't play with that. She's already tried to play with the microphone cords. Um, I'm hoping eventually she'll just like chill up here and sleep and that'd be cute to look at. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see how this goes. I might have to do a lot of editing around the cat. Um, again, we have Bip, but then we have a new friend, Philippe. Why I named him that? I don't know. It just came out of my mouth, like with Bip. But um, I just thought he was a derbs, so he came home with us. Hey! Hey, Dinky, good girl. She's trying to play with all the cords of the TV behind it. I am excited that this is coming up in a month or less than a month since the previous true crime. It's not a huge case, but I'll, I'll take it. Pardon how shiny I am. Again, I can't have the air on because it's right here and all you'd hear is So today, again, was another case I never heard of. And apparently it is a more well-known case especially in California, which I'm nowhere near there, so that could be why. Well, this is about Thelma Taylor, and this took place August 6th of 1949. And she was 15 years old, and this was in actually Portland, Oregon. So it's like a big thing in California, Oregon, like this area. And again, the silver lining I try to find is it is a solved case. So we know what happened and justice was served, but shouldn't have done that anyway. But anyway, let's get into it. So if I couldn't find a ton about her life, like until the, this case begins, which I feel bad about, but I just couldn't see any. So, oh, pardon my bracelets. So Thelma Ann Taylor was born December 12th of 1933. And I didn't find much about her upbringing, unfortunately. So this case begins with her as a 15-year-old sophomore attending Roosevelt High School. And on August 5th of 1949, Thelma was waiting for a bus in the St. John's neighborhood in Portland, Oregon. And she was traveling to Hillsboro, Hillsboro to get a summer job picking beans. I don't know why she's getting a summer job in August when you go back in less than a month. Maybe the beans hadn't grown yet. That's besides the point. But while she was waiting for the bus, to go try to pick beans for her summer job. She was aggressively approached by Morris Leland, who was a 22-year-old 22, 22 ex-convict. I couldn't quite see what he did before. Not good, though. Sorry if you just hear Dinky's bell. She's insisting her tail's out to get her. And he, quote-unquote, asked her to come with him to a spot by the Willamette River under the St. John's Bridge. And she refused, uh, and he uh, took her anyway. I think that's kind of what happened. The details are a bit fuzzy, and we can, I'll explain a bit later why sing, things are contradictory sometimes when looking at this case. But he took her, pretty sure he just took her, and he held her captive and attempted to rape her but it was said he changed his mind after finding out she was a virgin. I don't know how they knew this or if it's true. That's just some uh, fact I fact I saw. Um, also, if you're the kind of person who's gonna rape, I don't know why that would stop you if you're already that nasty of a person, but I don't know. And then Leland kept her there for the night. Uh, there was a ton of like thick underbrush that hid them and I'm sure he's threatening her to sh keep quiet. I'm sure he's not hooping and hollering either. But on the next morning, August 6th, Thelma began screaming for help after hearing workers switching train cars at the train yard nearby, like uh, I think uh, obviously above the bridge a little ways down. And so she started screaming for help. Makes sense. But then Leland killed Thelma with a steel bar to the head 
and a knife. So he hit her multiple times in the head and stabbed her. So he threw the bar, the, the steel bar, and the knife into the river, wiped his fingerprints off of her lunchbox. She had a lunchbox that just, when I just read it, said lunchbox or lunch pail. I'm like, how disgusting are you? To, to, how disgusting is Leland? And uh, yeah, he wiped his fingerprints off of her lunchbox and then cleaned up his cigarette butts. Uh, he then buried Thelma in a shallow grave under the pile, under a pile of driftwood. So on August 11th, Leland was arrested for car theft, but then also confessed to murdering Thelma Taylor. I feel like this happens, not a lot from what I've seen from other cases, They'll sometimes be caught for something else, and they're just like, I did it. I did this other thing too. Which maybe guilt was getting at him or something, I don't know. But he confessed, and he was charged with first degree murder on August 19th. Good. And his trial began August 4th of 1949, so a bit, like a couple months later. And he pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Which again, I'm always like, how sane can a person be if they're doing these kind of things? Like murdering? Um, but I know it's about like, I know it's not necessarily about that, but I think you get what I mean. But the trial ended on November 11th with him being found guilty, thankfully, and sentenced to death. He was going to be executed January 20th of 1950, so just around the corner. And he asked for a new trial, but he was denied, thankfully, and he was executed by gas chamber on January 9th of 1953. So this is the first time I think in one of the cases I've covered where it was a couple of years before the death sentence actually happened. Because I feel like the last couple I've done where there's been a death sentencing, it was, they were quite on it. But yeah, I believe because he asked for a new trial, that delayed his execution, but he was executed on January 9th of 1953. And then Taylor was buried in Columbia Cemetery in Park Rose area of Portland, Oregon. And also where she was murdered, unfortunately, became a public park. It did. Odd place to do it, but I guess. And it's uh, called Cathedral Park. And it became the park on May 3rd of 1980. So at least they waited a little bit before turning the crime scene into a park. But that, that's really it. This is pretty cut and dry. And I couldn't find much. Unfortunately, I wanted, I tried to know more about the poor victims, but I didn't see anything on her. I do want to mention, because her older sister, who I believe is still alive. The articles I read, she was still alive then, but it was a couple years ago. It said she actually wasn't murdered under the bridge. She was eight, murdered eight blocks north of the bridge. And then there's been other sources that said she was held captive and raped for a week. And that's just not true, according to her sister. And she really wants the facts to be out there about what happened to her sister. And she also, because this is a more well-known case in that area, Thelma is known as like a ghost folklore kind of situation. They say people will go there at, to the park at night and hear her screaming for help and they'll see the ghost of Thelma and the sister doesn't want that and I can totally understand that because remember if this is a real person this happened to, the family is still alive. Like let's try not to do that. Imagine, hello, imagine what it would be like There's Dinky. <laughs> Imagine what it'd be like if that was your sibling or your child and now people are using it as her murder as like, hello, I'm busy. They're using it as like a form of entertainment. So please don't do that. Now, most people who watch my true crimes are more local. So like Michigan Midwest area, not saying all of them, but most. So we might not know this case as well, but if you are 
near where this took place and you've heard of the folklore about it, try to remember that this was a real person and their family still alive and it upsets them. And I do not blame them for that. And as usual, there I'll try to link the find a grave below so you can leave kind words, some flowers if you want, or kind words if you want, or if you want to learn more about um, family members, because I know they're sometimes connected on find a grave. But then also, I believe there was a Facebook page that someone started to get the facts straight. If it's still up, I will try to link that as well, but I don't know if it is. Well, thank you for watching. Um, Hey, you knocked over Bip. Poor Bip. My cat. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Hope you have a good day <laughs> whenever you're watching this during the day or good night. And hug your relatives and try to be considerate if you're talking about local folklore that may have a truly not great backstory rooted in reality. Bye, guys.